Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to build a news blog. We're going to cover everything that you need to know so that you can create a successful news blog. We're going to talk about what a news blog is. I'm going to show you a few examples. I'm going to show you how to pick a niche and what that means and then why you need to niche down and how to do it relatively easy. Next, we're going to pick a platform and get a domain name. You can click the first link in the description to get that stuff for free. You can actually get a domain name for free when you click the first link in the description. After that, we are going to show you how to install WordPress, how to install a WordPress theme and why that's important, and the important changes you absolutely need to make in order to find success, and then of course, start writing. After that, we are going to talk about different ways that you can make money, why you need to share it on social media in the beginning, and then how many blog posts you need to write to start finding traction. So make sure you click the first link in the description to start your news blog today. So let's go ahead and get right into it. What is a news blog? A news blog is simply you're going to write on trending and important topics. It can be in a variety of niches or categories. And let me just get out of here real quick and show you what I mean. All right. So if I drag this over, this is an example of a news blog. They are writing on trending topics and they are writing a lot uh, on trending topics on a variety of, of niches. So we're talking about word, world news, politics, uh, health, finance, and these are all different niches or categories. So if we look at the top here, again, this is the Huff Post or HuffingtonPost.com. And if we look, you see it says news, politics, entertainment, life, personal, shopping, video. These are all different categories. So if we click on news, there's going to be subcategories. So if we look at this, they're talking about Native American voting rights. They're talking about Colorado uh, clerk. And if you scroll down uh, the world news, Taliban, they're talking about all sorts of stuff. And these are different niches or subcategories. What I recommend that you do when you first get started with your news blog, because no one knows what it is, I recommend that you pick a niche. And one of the ways that you can pick a niche is if you go over to a website like CNN.com and you take a look, they have niches and sub niches. So if we're looking at this, you can see um, US world politics, business, opinion, health, entertainment, style, travel, sports, videos. We could pick, let's say politics or let's pick world. Let's pick world. So within world, there are different categories within world. As you can see, they have Africa, Americas, Asia, Australia, China, Europe, India, Middle East and United Kingdom. If we click on Africa, you can see that they are writing content exclusively on Africa and all things Africa. And so, if you are to get started with your news blog today, I recommend that you niche all the way down here because if you start writing on higher level topics, you're going to be competing with the CNNs and the Huffington Post and the Fox News, and it's going to be difficult. So when I talk about picking a niche and niching down, this is what I'm talking about. Going down, talking about different things within Africa or, you know, United States politics. You can even talk about state politics. You could start there and niche and, and as your, as your website gets larger, you can niche up and start talking about more competitive things. And the next step is you want to pick a platform and a domain name. Now, what a platform is, it's simply web hosting. And basically what web hosting is, is you are renting hard drive space from a third party. In this case, Bluehost, you are renting space in order to put your internet files there. You're gonna put your website, your WordPress website there. You're gonna put any images or videos. You're gonna put it right on your web hosting platform and they're gonna manage it all for you so that you can just focus on writing. When you click the first link in the description, you're gonna get a domain name for free. Now, a domain name is basically how people are going to refer to you. For example, if we go over to CNN.com, that's their domain name. HuffPost.com is their domain name, and you'll get it for free for one year. So you want to make sure that you're picking a domain name that is relevant to your niche or niche. If you are creating a news network, you can call it whatever your news network name is, and you can actually go over to the first link in the description and see if it's taken or not. But what we're going to do right now is I'm going to walk you through the steps step by step. I'm going to show you step by step how to set up your web hosting and domain name in four minutes. So, so at this point, I'm going to show you how to set everything up and then we're going to actually move on to the next step. When you click that link, you'll be taken to this website where you'll go ahead and click get started. What I recommend is to click the first one on the far left, the basic plan, if you're just getting started with a website. As you can see, there are a number of options, but click that, click select, and then move on. Here you're going to create a domain name. If you have one in mind, you can type it in here like you see that I do. What I recommend is try and find a domain name that's going to be related to your niche. Now, what I do is I type in a domain name that I know is already taken. When it's taken, you're going to get this error. What you can then do is go back and try different domains. Now, make sure again, you want to pick one that's related to your niche. Click 
next and then you're going to see a green box that says that it's approved the next step is simply to go through and enter in your contact information make sure that you when you scroll down here make sure that you leave all of the settings on um, but again enter in your contact information the settings right here where it says domain privacy leave all of this checked if you don't leave it checked you're going to get people reaching out to you uh, spamming you emailing you trying to get you to sign up for web hosting so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and sign up and then jump back to you once i sign on and move to the next step all right so i have signed up and i'm going to go ahead and set up my website initially just create a simple username and password make sure it meets the requirements there and then move on. Um, make sure that you write it down too. Write it down in a safe spot so that you have it and you remember it because it can be a pain to go ahead and get everything back. You're gonna have to enter in like some vital information, but just make sure that you write it down. It's really easy and really simple. Now, one thing that I do wanna note is that this part is not sped up at all. This is actual real time and you can see that you'll go from absolutely nothing to a complete website in less than probably 10 minutes. And once you click submit, you're going to move on to the next step where you get to log in. Here is where you're actually going to start creating your WordPress website. Now, the great thing is, is Bluehost really does everything for you. And it's really simple. So again, I'm not speeding this up at all. And I want you to see what it really takes to create a website. Bluehost is going to do a little bit of work in the background for you. And we're just going to actually click on skip this step. This one, first one I clicked on start a blog but for the next step just click skip because we know what we're doing and i'm actually going to tell you what to do so that we can get up and running click get started right here on the left hand side and then move on just click skip here and click skip here and then just pick the first one in the far left make sure that you're picking a free theme because they'll charge you they have both free and premium themes which i'll talk about in just a moment so right now it's actually creating your wordpress website in just a few moments, you're gonna click on log in to WordPress on the right hand side there. You'll see it in just a second. And then we can actually start looking at some basic configurations. All right, so we click log in and now we actually have a WordPress website. What may need to happen is you may need to click refresh a few times to get it to, to work, but now we have our website as you can see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna log in and delete a few plugins because right now it has the coming soon and so if someone tried to get to your website at this moment, it's going to say coming soon to them, even though we can see it. This is what your WordPress website looks like. But for everyone else outside of your network, it's going to say coming soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to plugins eventually, and we're going to delete some of the plugins that we don't need. Now, I talk a little bit about plugins later on, but... Um, Plugins add additional features and functionality. We are going to deactivate the Bluehost as well as the um, other plugins that are already activated. And then we can go through and make the necessary changes, which I'll cover in just a moment. So we're going to deactivate them and then delete them. Now you want to make sure that you only have the plugins that you're using on your website. The more plugins you have, the slower your website's going to respond and, and function, and you're going to lose out on ranking. So make sure you have a lean setup very few plugins, and then move on. As you can see right now, I'm just simply deleting some stuff that you don't need. Uh, if you want to, you could keep them, but obviously if, if you're just getting started, you don't need this other stuff. What's more important is the themes that we're gonna talk about in just a moment, as well as getting writing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete, delete those, deactivate them, and then we're actually gonna start moving on to settings, which you see right here. All right, so at this point we have WordPress installed. We have a basic WordPress theme. Right now I wanna show you how to install a premium WordPress theme. Now I like installing premium WordPress themes simply because they add additional features and functionality. If we go back over to the huffpost.com, what we're gonna see here is a WordPress theme. As you can see here, this is a WordPress theme. There are thousands of different themes out there. Uh, a premium WordPress theme is gonna give you additional features and functionality. It's gonna change the look and feel. As I mentioned, this is a WordPress theme. Now you can find different themes at ThemeForce. So we're gonna just type in themeforce.net. And when you go here, you're gonna see there are tons of different themes. What we can do is we can look for a news-based theme. So I just typed in news, and you're gonna see there are tons of options. There's newspaper, there's just go through and take a look and find one that you feel comfortable with. The second link in the description will take you right over to, to ThemeForce. What you're gonna do, look through here, find a WordPress theme that you like, add it to the cart right here, and then purchase the theme. When you purchase the theme, you're gonna be able to download a zip drive. You're going to download that zip drive to your computer. You're going to unpack that zip drive, and that zip drive will actually lead 
to another zip drive. So a zip within a zip, you're going to take that zip drive and you're going to install it onto your WordPress website. And let's take a look at how to do that. So we're simply going to go over to go back here. We are going to go to appearance. We're going to go to themes and we are going to click on add new. Then we are going to click on upload theme. And then we're either going to drag and drop that theme that we just downloaded. So the, the zip within the zip, we're going to drag it and drop it right here, or we can click on choose file and find it in our downloads folder. Once you add it, you're going to activate it and it's going to change the way your website looks. As you know, we have that basic theme and we just changed it. And so we're going to actually make it look a little bit better. Now, the next step is to simply start writing. Now to start writing, you're going to go over to posts and you're going to click on add new post. And before, if you recall, I actually had you change the, the post title from just the plain one to the post name. And this is where the benefits of it are going to pay off. So the reason why we do this is to optimize our, our pages for search engine. This is called search engine optimization. When people are looking up different things on the internet, they just type in the keyword and we want our web page to show up near the top. If we go over to Huffington Post or, or HuffPost.com and we click on this, excuse me, you can see that they have their title the same as their um, their their post name. So this is actually what we're going to do too. They actually don't do a great job of it, but since their website's a little bit larger, they can basically do what they want. A smaller website, we got to play by the rules. And so this these are the rules. You're going to give your web page a title, your post a title. So we could say, um, we'll say like, 10 things you didn't know about X, we'll say. And then make sure you wanna spell these words correctly. Make sure that you capitalize them. And when we create our actual post, this is gonna show up, it's gonna be webhostingrewind.com forward slash 10 things you didn't know about X. That is gonna be the name of our post. And we're doing this so that we can get discovered organically within the search engines. And so the question that always pops up is how long should my blog post be and how do I start writing? And the answer to both of those is it really depends. How long should your blog post be? It should be as long as it needs to be to answer the question. Now, oftentimes people will feel like they have to write a 4,000 word blog post, but if you can answer the question directly and succinctly in 1,000 or 2,000 words, that's how long it needs to be. Take a look at your competitors that are writing in the same space and make sure your, your blog post is about that size. It can be a little bit more, it can be a little bit less, but make sure it's within that realm. And for me, the way that I like to get started is with a brainstorming session. So what I'll do is I'll sit down and say, I'll type in who, what, when, where, why, and how and i'll just go through and i'll make questions based on the keyword so if we're trying to create content about uh the taliban for example we'll say like who did who is the taliban who are comprised of the taliban what what do they want what are their needs why are they doing what they're doing and when we do that we can actually make make each one of those posts h2 so if, for example we'll say how was the taliban T A? am going to spell this wrong but ta We'll just call it tab for now. I apologize. Don't mean to offend anyone, but how was the tab formed? And we're going to put a question mark. And because people are probably wondering this, we're going to make this an H2. And I'm simply going to answer the question based on the H2. I'm going to fill it out, make sure that I, I make sure that I answer it succinctly and then move on. But this is going to help you write faster because you are spending time up front thinking about what you want to write. Um, and then just writing it out. Now, I like to use a plugin called Grammarly. This is that Grammarly right here. There is a free and premium version. It's gonna help you with your grammar, spelling, punctuation. It's basically the squiggly line that you find in Microsoft Word, but it's for, for websites and it's you know Grammarly. And one way that you can find topics to write on a little bit quicker is if you go over to a website called Google Trends. So we're gonna go to trends. It's trends.google.com. And you can go here and you can find topics that people are actually talking about up to the minute. So we're gonna click on trending searches and this is exactly what people are talking about. So yesterday, unfortunately, there was another earthquake in Haiti and you know people are talking about it. Chicago Bears, 49ers. As you can see, these are things that people were talking about yesterday. If we look at real-time searches, we can see people are talking about this up to the minute and this is gonna help you write 
faster and write relevant topics because when you're in the news niche, you're going to need a lot of content and you are going to need relevant topical up to the minute information. It'll probably also help if you follow a number of a number of people on Twitter that have break news that'll help you as well. And what you will want to do, let's go back over to our slide deck here. So we are we've made the changes, we've started writing. The next thing we want to do is talk about different ways to make money. Now there are a number of ways to make money with your website. One thing that you can do if we go back over to the Huffington Post or Huff Post, they have ads. Whoops. They have ads right on their website. This right here, this ad outreach, this is an ad. So if someone were to click on this link, the HuffPost would actually make money from it. That's just one way. Another thing you can do is you can be an affiliate for relevant products and services. Affiliate marketing is simply recommending or selling other people's products. When someone clicks on your affiliate link and makes a purchase, you earn a commission. And I actually have a course on affiliate marketing. If you click the third link in the description, you'll learn step by step all about affiliate marketing. But you can sell your own digital products. Maybe you've written a book or an ebook regarding whatever it is that your website's about. You can sell your ebook right from your your website. You can sell physical products. Maybe you have a t-shirt that you want to sell. You can sell it right from there as well. But there's a number of ways to make a pretty good living simply from your news blog or website. All right, so let's go back over to our slide deck. The next thing you want to do is you want to share it on social media. The reason why you want to share it on social media is initially Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, they're not going to pick up your blog initially. And so you want to start getting traffic relatively fast. And what I recommend that you do is find relevant places on the internet and share it. You can share it in reddits or subreddits. You can create a Facebook group for news or you know join other people's Facebook groups, share it on Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn, find relevant places and share it there. That's going to help you grow a little bit faster. It's going to get the engine going. Now, the question with right, 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 right is how many blog posts should I write? Now, because you're in the news niche, you're going to have to write a lot of posts daily. I think that you should be writing two or three posts per day, depending on, on the sub niche you choose. Write two or three blog posts per day to get up and running. The more blog posts you write, the more opportunities you, you give yourself. And because news is changing every 30 seconds, it feels like you're going to need a lot of relevant content. I, ideally, I tell people to write 50 blog posts to see if you're starting to get traffic for the news niche, you might just have to write for 50 days straight. If you have to write three blog posts for 50 days straight, that is something that you're going to need to consider, but you're gonna write a lot and you're gonna to continue to write a, write a lot unless you hire people to help you out. And then finally, make sure that you check out the links in the description to help you get up and running. If you like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you're notified when I upload my next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.